hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Um, I know it's normally motorbikes but uh, today we're going to do something a little bit different. Uh, it is motorcycle related. I've always done racing for a long time but normally on small capacity bikes 125s and 50s. So I've always wanted a dyno. So today I'm going to start off by introducing me road dyno which I'm going to be making for my motorbike. Um, now the type I'm going to make is an inertia type where you have a heavy mass which you rotate and to do that what I'm going to use is this motor here which I'm sitting on I'll just show you that right so this is it here it's quite a large motor um, it was a, a ventilation motor for something I don't know what I bought it from eBay and if give you an idea of the size, this is a, a two foot rule and it's best part of two foot. I've already took the fan off. Um, the rotor which goes inside, I've already taken it out. And this is it here. I don't know if you can see it there. So I've got the rotor. Um, it's quite a weight. It's about about eight and a half inches across um, and it's got some good bearings. Now the reason I chose this was because to get a piece of steel some of the order of this size just the billet of steel alone was about £500. And um, dynos aren't cheap. So what I did I bought this mortar and I think the mortar cost me £140. Um, now just in case that's not heavy enough, what I'm also going to use is on the ends of the shafts I've managed to get hold of a couple of these out of the scrapyard and it's two flywheels and again they're quite the size. They're 16 inches in diameter and I've weighed them in the way 8 stone each. So I've got two of those, I'm going to put one on each side of the shaft. Now as you can see I've been cheating, I've already taken this to a, I've added put on a lathe and I've turned down the shaft at each side so each of these flywheels can slide on the end of there. Now the motor which it's going into, I'm going to cut the top off the motor so that the, the wheel on the bike can rest on this and as you accelerate with the bike it's going to turn this rotor and uh, so that speed it up and that's where you get the, the resistance for, as it increases the inertia of the rotor. Now to take the top off this is one of the end plates now with the end plate the motor comes to the rotor, should I say, comes to around about here inside. It's about the same diameter as that. So I'm not going to cut the top off like that. The reason being that these end plates hold the bearings for the rotor. And if I do that, I'll only have the two bolts at the bottom and it could move around a little bit. It's not going to hold it very steady. So what I'm going to do is cut it at an angle from here, so I'm going to cut it across there. All right. Now that will still leave me with three holes to hold the, the end plate on, supporting the bearing. So really what I need to do is turn the motor like that on at about 40-45 degrees so that it's lying flat. That's the only disadvantage of doing it that way. Now, when I'm looking at it, I don't think I'm going to cut through the end plate itself, but I will be taking the top off the motor, and that will leave me quite a distance between the two, so I should have enough clearance for anything. Yes, 17 inches, so I'm not going to have any problems with a, a wheel strain a little bit either side should be fine right so 
here we go, we're going to try and cut the top of this off, cutting through the side here and cutting along the top with a big angle grinder. So you'll have to excuse me while I cut in with this and excuse me back. Right, so here's the next stage. What I've managed to do is take the top plate off. It did take quite a lot of grinding and quite a lot of chiselling to crack it down, but I've managed to split it. Now, here's the motor. And there's the stator windings. Now the stator windings are wrapped around this soft iron core and that's inside of the main body of the motor. Luckily, it looks like this has only been sort of heat shrinked into place where they've heated up the motor, slid it over the top, then allowed it to cool so it uh, nips onto the motor because I was able to wedge open the motor a little bit just using a piece of wood and then using the little winch managed to jack it up and lift it off. I'm not going to leave it there too long because that's not on the main beam in me garage and I don't want to pull on the roof down so I'm going to take that down just now. Right so now I've got the side off and the, the windings taken out I'm going to cut some of these fins off because when it's flat that's going to be sticking up a little bit and so will this and I want it as flush as possible. I know I'm going to have the side plate still sticking up with the flywheels on which are bigger but I still would like the centre further down so when a tyre's on there I want as much clearance as I can get between the tyre and this casing. left a lot of sharp edges so I'm just going to get me smaller grinder and uh, maybe it's a flap disc and try taking off some of these sharp edges. Right, normally I would use a, an angle grinder but um, with a grinding disc but I'm going to try it with a flap disc. So I'm starting to use these more and more. Right, that doesn't seem bad. I think the next stage is trying to make a bracket on the bottom here so that when it's at about 45 degrees or so, I want that to be level. Now I've got two good bolt holes in the bottom here and two here where these existing brackets are on but I may take those brackets off. If you can see them here, but they've got two big bolts in the bottom of each. But where is the other one at that angle? I need it straight across. So I think I'll go and have a look, see what metal I've got to try and make a bracket for that. So I think that'll be my ne next stage, make a bracket for that. Um, now, as far as instrumentation goes recording the data what I've actually got is this little gadget which I picked up off eBay quite a few years ago and it's called a road dyno now it's a little bit old now but still works the same 
it acts like a little data logger recording the information so we've got a little box we've got a lead here and the idea behind this is that this clamp would clamp on one of your high tension leads it's plugged into here and as you accelerate in your car it would record the time in between each of the pulses as you accelerate and the faster you get the closer the, the pulses are together and from that I could work out the brake horse power in the car so what I've intended to use is the inertia dyno with this attached to the one of the spark plug leads from the bike and that way it'll be able to um, judge how much power there is now it may not be ex exactly accurate, may not compared with another professional dyno but all I need to do is say that that bike gave out so much power one time and I've made some changes has that increased the power or reduced the power from that and then I'll know whether I've made any advances or I'm going backwards with me tuning so that's the basic idea behind it anyway thank you all for watching and uh, please join me in the next episode where hopefully I'll have the bracket made and I'll start assembling the dyno uh, into one piece.